Propagation is the easiest way to get way more harvest and grow more in less space. I've been testing out different methods to do my propagation and wanted to share my current setup. By doing this, I hope to help those who are thinking about starting indoors or undercover this year, and uh, also those that are already doing it. So if you have a setup right now, let me know in the comments. All right, let's get growing. Hey, and what is going on fellow dreamers? Welcome to the Fawn Dream. My name is Raymond, and today we're gonna look at my propagation setup for annual vegetables. If you're interested in Nicole's cut flowers propagation, please do let us know in the comments and we'll make sure to also make a video about her setup. Let's first start with why you might wanna start out your vegetables indoors or under cover. The first and foremost reason is to extend our growing season. It's now the beginning of April and our last frost date is in the middle of May, meaning most of our vegetables can't really go outside until then. But we already started out beetroot, radishes, pointed cabbage, uh, eggplants, peppers, and way more. Some started as early as February to give them loads of time to grow. So by starting the vegetables indoor, we've added two and a half months to our growing season. Another reason is protecting small sprouting plants from animals and pests. Birds, well, they eat some of the seeds and snails, they eat so many of the leaves that it's too much damage and actually stops the growth of our seedlings. By starting them in a safe environment, we can protect them and raise them in perfect conditions. If you want to figure out when you need to start your seedlings indoor, check out the video, when to start the vegetables indoor. Here is a, a patch that I filled up with uh, beetroot, but you can see that some birds actually started to poke some holes through it, trying to reach the plants, but because they already started inside, they had started off with great conditions and they're now strong enough to take some damage. So only a few got plucked, but the rest is still safe underneath this fleece. Another reason to start indoors is that some seeds need some frost or a cold week to actually start. Because we start seeds at home, we can just throw them in the fridge or the freezer without needing to go back and forth between the allotment and that just saves a lot of time and makes it easy because we have everything nearby. Here on the growing rack, we're currently growing loads of small seedlings. These are mainly flowers for the cut flower garden, but all of our seedlings start out their life in the attic at home. This way we have better control over the temperature and also the light levels. Let's go home and check it out. Let's look at how we start all of our seedlings right now. We do this inside at the moment. We can move outside if we want to, but it's currently not the best weather. So starting them inside is really, for us, the way to go. Behind me, the big nursery rack. You've probably seen it before if you're familiar with the channel. Um, that has lights on it. Then next to that, we have a new small rack. It's just there for all the plants that haven't germinated just yet, so they don't need light. So we can uh, put them over there. And also we have a few heating mats. If we want to, we can put the heating mats to the top level and then we can just put a few uh, seeding trays to germinate that need heat but don't need light just yet. So we have more space for plants that do need light. We've got our pots and trays stored here on the top of our nursery. So it's easy to grab what you need. There are a range of different cell sizes and uh, different tray sizes to serve any plant's needs. A few deep trays to promote uh, root growth for artichoke and peas, and a few shallow ones for spinach and lettuce. And also we have the nine centimeter pots for transplants. We have a lot of peppers in that right now, and we'll also put the tomatoes in that. So we just have a, a wide range of variety that we can pick off the shelves. The compost we take straight from our bags because it's, uh, well, we use it a lot. So putting them in a bin takes more time than just doing it like that. So um, I like to use potting mix. I'm a big fan of it because of the draining capabilities. I don't think it's worth spending extra money over it for compost. So if you don't want to spend too much money, compost does the job of raising plants perfectly well. Just take out any bigger chunks. Now we do spend some extra on biological compost or ecological compost or potting mix with an uh, RHP quality mark. And this ensures the compost is of a good quality and has no disease or pesticides. Now, like I said, you don't have to get uh, potting mix specifically. We also use a lot of compost to start, uh, but when you do, make sure that you're looking for something that has quite a fine texture because small plants have small roots and small roots need small clumps to grab onto. For watering here in the attic, we have a few options. This is a pressure sprayer, and I can just spray all the plants from above. But as you guys might know, some plants don't really like to get water from above. They don't like wet leaves. That's also why we have a few fans here in the back to just make sure that 
If there's any water, then there at least is some circulation here of air that will dry off the plants. So if we're not using the pressure sprayer, we can go to a watering can. This is just a small can that's really easy to just fill up the tops here. So you get more precise and you don't wet the leaves. And also I use this to fill up these bottom 1020 trays. And that's also a big way of watering for us. We use these trays and they're actually currently filled up because I just filled them up. But uh, we just put in some water here at the bottom and the plants suck up the moisture from the bottom and take it to the top. That way we don't wet the leaves and we don't have to take them out. We just have a few things that we know that will stay in here and we can just uh, water them from below. Now, when we want to water the container-wise trays, we're running in a small issue because, well, the 1020 trays are so much bigger. So therefore we're using a lot of space to water these. And if we're gonna put that in the growing rack, we're basically wasting all this space. Now, there's a solution for it though. And that solution is this propagator. This is actually a propagator that fits the container-wise trays perfectly. All the shallow versions of the container-wise trays fit in this propagator so at the same time you have something to bottom water your trays and you can put on the lid and just use it as an actual propagator so this is actually a great addition to buy uh, i'll put some links in the description where you can get them in the growing rack the current light setup is four t5 led 120 centimeter bars that draw 14 watts each i'm not going to recommend these because I'm not 100% sure if it's enough light. The plants are growing and they're looking all right, but be sure to do some research before getting your own lights. Next to that, I'm using these computer fans. I've hardwired them to an adapter I had laying around. It's working for me, but don't try this at home and just start soldering stuff together. There are fans out there that are specially designed for plant growth. I just wanted to do a quick rundown of how I start my seeds usually. Uh, first, I wanna start with this pot, very special pot. And I have one over here and one in the greenhouse as well. The one in the greenhouse is actually drilled down to the table. Uh, I don't want to do it to this table here, but what's in this? Well, a few scissors, a few pencils, reusable plant labels, a seed dispenser, an eraser, a few tweezers to help with pricking out small seedlings, and a meat thermometer. And this is actually used to measure the soil temperature. So it's just a pot filled up with loads of gear that you might need and might be handy to have at hand. So I'm gonna try and fill up this uh, uh, tray today. I'm gonna put it in my seed tray. And the reason for that is that I don't wanna spill all the compost anywhere. I'm still looking for like a, a work tray, something like that. We haven't really found it just yet, but for now we're using the 1020 trays. In this tray, I'm gonna put my compost. And this is quite a fine mix, as you can see over here. We're just gonna spread it on there and uh, work it in there a little bit. And we are gonna push it down. Now, some people say you shouldn't push down your compost. Trust me, it's fine to do, especially the bottom layer, because the bottom layer at the beginning won't hold your seeds. Your seeds won't go down that far. So now I've filled it up and we can plant seeds now, or we can press it down and firm up the cells. And now what you will see is that way more compost can fit in that cell and also we won't have any issues of compost falling out later. So I'm gonna grab some stuff from the side here, maybe add a little bit more and spread it on top to fill it all up. And uh, I think that will do. I always water my compost before I plant the seeds and a little bit after, but mainly before. And this is to make sure that the seeds don't drift away when watering them after we planted the seeds. The next step after that is just slightly, slightly, really softly put in some dents. And this of course depends on what you're gonna plant. Today we're gonna do a few different things. I'm gonna do some multi-sowing of beetroot. We're also gonna put some uh, red cabbage in there and I'm gonna put some Brussels sprouts in there because well, it's about time we get them in and I didn't do it already. So, and it's also a test because this is quite a small sized um, tray and I'm just wondering how well will the seeds perform in so little compost? I haven't really tried too much with these trays. Uh, they're quite new, so I'm not too sure. I know for beetroot, they will probably do fine, but I'm not too sure for the brassicas and the cabbages and all that stuff. So let's get the beetroots in. I'm gonna do about uh, three to four seeds per cell. So that's all the beetroot in. Uh, we've did, done six rows, six rows for beetroot. We have four left. I'll do two for the red cabbage and two for the Brussels sprouts. And that's the last Brussels sprout in. 
So now we can top it off with our compost. I like to grab it in between two hands and start rubbing them against each other. That way, small chunks will fall down and cover a nice layer evenly throughout the entire tray. Now you don't have to do this, this is just the way that I found this handy to do and gives you quite precision to where it should go and gives us nice layers. And then we're just gonna press it down a little bit. Now you might be able to tell that we have a little bit of a layer on top here. That's just fine because over time compost settles in and then the cells will be filled up to the brim. After the final layer is on top, I like to give them a nice drizzle of water again, just to wet the top soil as well. It might be that we're not hitting everything, but this way we're not drowning the seeds at this moment anymore, and they, they won't really go anywhere. This is just a small drizzle of water to get them wet. All right, that's it. I already made some plant labels here, so we're just gonna put them in. We got the beetroot over here, red cabbage over here, and then at the bank, the Brussels sprouts. And that's a tray completely filled up and ready to be put aside in our rack and uh, wait for the germination to start. Once the vegetables have developed enough leaves and are almost ready to go outside, I like to take them into the greenhouse. In here we can harden them off. They will get used to the colder night temperatures and during the day I like to take them outside and just give them a, a little bit of the cold day as well. Now we do want to build a cold frame, we don't have that set up right now. The glass is already here but the wood didn't arrive just yet. But when we have the cold frame, that's definitely a place where we will harden off our plants. We also got a propagation table here to do some propagating and some transplanting. But really, we don't really use it that much for that. We get all the plants from the attic and put them on here so we just have some extra space. Now watering here in the greenhouse is also a little bit different than at home because we're not dealing with any wooden flooring here. We can just pour all the water on the ground. And also, we get our water from rainfall. So the greenhouse is collecting the water for us. I've got a fine rose on my watering can. I also like to use some stairs to get up here. And then all I need to do is just get them all wet. Now, I'm personally never too precise with watering. Uh, these seedlings might be still small, but they can take some watering. When they're outside, in the outside world, they will also get rainfall, which is the same as this fine rose. And that's our current propagation setup. I thought it was interesting to share because instead of growing everything in the greenhouse, or in a polytunnel, we're starting our seedlings in the attic. This is something that I feel many people can do. So if I have inspired you, please let me know in the comments. For now, thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, leave a like, consider subscribing, or if you wanna see more behind the scenes content and support the channel, become a Patreon. But most of all, don't forget to lift the fun dream. If we put in, that was my hand. Let me put this aside. Quick reaction time.